All right. Good evening, everybody. Um, welcome to the October 12th meeting of the Amherst Cultural Council. I'm going to um, read the little disclaimer from the Attorney General here. Um, pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting is conducted via remote means, um, and members of the public who wish to access the meeting can do so uh, over Zoom. Um, no in-person attendance of members of the public is permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. Um, in the event that we're unable to do so, uh, we will post, and regard this, we'll be posting the recording of this video on our on the town's YouTube channel, um, and, you know, shortly after the meeting. So that is the that is the disclaimer that we have been reading throughout the COVID pandemic, and <laughs> we'll continue to do so until we're off Zoom, I guess. Um, and now we'll just go around and do, I guess we just need to do sort of a mic and audio check. So we just need folks to uh, audibly tell us that you can hear us and, and be heard. So I'll just call out across the, um, the screen, the boxes on my screen. Um, so Robin. I can hear you. And Toby. Hello, I can hear hey, you. Uh, and Eleanor. Hello. Hello. And Cody. Loud and clear. Hello, hey. and Christine. Can you hear me? We can yes. hear you. I hear you. Uh, okay. It's not a trend. So we do have a new secretary, Leah. Um, oh. I don't see her right now. So she I is running. Start. She is running late. So. Um, I emailed with her earlier and I said we could take care of taking notes uh, until she gets here so I can take care of that. Okay, thank you very much for doing that. Um, and then, so let's see, the, um, we do have a guest speaker who's gonna join us here. She's, she's picking up a kid, but she said to just text her when we're ready. So I will just say we are ready. Um, and so, so that'll be Gabrielle Gould. Um, we, could, we could approve the minutes if we want to approve the minutes. We have a quorum now, and it's always good to get that done sooner rather than later so they don't pile up. Um, I don't know if anybody wants to make that motion to, to approve the minutes. Motion to approve the minutes. All right. I'll second. Okay. So now we'll just do a quick roll call. Um, Toby. Uh, I, yay or nay on the minutes? Yay. <laughs> uh, Cody? Yay. Julianne? Yay. Who's muted? Yay. Uh, Christy? Yay. And I am also a yay, so the minutes are approved. Um, thank you all very much. And now it is my pleasure to introduce Gabrielle Gould who is the executive director of the uh, Downtown Business Improvement District and also of the Amherst Cultural District or um, chair of the Cultural District, I think. Um, and so I, I invited Gabrielle because, you know, we had some really exciting conversations with uh, our group last time about possible activities that the local council could do. And the Cultural District, um, of which Robin is a member, I'm a member, and then some of our past folks are members, it has an annual allocation as well that they that they get from the state. Um, they're going to have about fifteen thousand this year. I don't think they're they're definitely not looking to put all of that into an event, but but there's enough. Um, I think there's enough energy and enough synergy there that since we were talking about events that we could put on, um, I thought it was worthwhile for us to just sort of hear from Gabrielle in terms of where those conversations are at with the cultural district. Um, and then since we were going to talk about our own activities today anyway it seemed like a natural thing to just look for opportunities for potential collaboration, synergy, uh, et cetera. So I think without any further ado, I'll turn it over to you, Gabrielle. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Um, as Matt said, Gabrielle Gould, I am um, the executive director of the Business Improvement District. Um, I'm also the founder of the Downtown Amherst Foundation, which has created the Drake Live Music and Performance Venue in Downtown Amherst. And yes, I sit um, on the Cultural District group and um, 
so I, I have my plate full, um, but I'm excited to be here and tell you a little bit about what we have been doing and what we'd like to do in the future. Um, I can start with the bid. Um, hopefully everybody was able to attend or maybe saw photos or um, were part of the block party this year. We had our biggest attendance to that event, over 7,000 people. Um, we close um, North Pleasant Street from Coles Road or Realignment Park all the way to the top of Amity and Main. And we bring out um, all the businesses along that street and other businesses in the downtown come over. They put out all their food. We hire uh, different kinds of performers and performances. And this year we built a real stage at the top of the street and had Mr. G play and also the Soul Magnet. So all in all, that was a really fantastic, exciting and great success. And after two years of not being able to produce the block party, it was great to have it back. Uh, we also host the summer music series at the bid, which is the four Friday nights in July and August. We uh, work, we collaborate with UMass Jazz in July and culminate their Jazz in July on the Common. Those four concerts are free for everyone. And we try really hard to get a great um, swath of genres. So, you know, we have a country singer, we have, um, you know, something that's more child friendly, dance friendly, of course, jazz, um, rock and roll, pop, and all of that. So, those were very successful this summer as well. Um, so that's a little bit about what the bid does in terms of running uh, some cultural entities and cultural events downtown. The Downtown Amherst Foundation, as I said, is a 501c3 nonprofit. It serves a totally different board of directors than the bid. And we recently, about six months ago, opened the Drake. Uh, the Drake has been highly successful. Last week, um, we had six shows in a row and we brought over 1,200 people to downtown Amherst for live performances. Um, if you're paying any attention to the Drake, you will see that that is running the gamut of world music, pop, funk, hip hop, rock and roll, open mic nights. Um, we have about six nights this year dedicated to working with the high school um, and bringing those students onto our stage. And we're also working on collaborations with Amherst College and UMass. Uh, Amherst College recently, we brought the um, Isuri String Quartet to the Drake and did a Brandenburg. We had 47 musicians um, all playing Brahms at the Drake. It was incredible. It was a free performance for everybody. Um, so we're doing a myriad of free programs Programming and then, of course, ticketed programming as we bring world class acts in. Um, as our uh, head of the uh, cultural district, if you will, um, the MOU for the cultural district grant and funding does go through the bid offices. So we handle all the billing um, and paying out, et cetera, for anything that the cultural district does. Um, like many things, uh, the last couple of years were hard for the cultural district. Um, we lost several members just due to probably burnout and ready to move on to other things. But we have a bright future ahead of us. We've had really great conversations with uh, Mass Cultural, um, our liaisons there, and we kind of see the path forward and what we're doing. And we're about to present to our uh, group at the cultural district, which Matt and Robin both serve on. I'm not sure if anybody else on this um, serves on that board, um, but we'll be presenting, um, there's going to be a $15,000 grant to cultural districts this year, which is um, quite a step up from their normal 5,000. And we have some really great ideas on how to use that to promote the arts and culture of Amherst outside of the Amherst area. So 50 miles out um, and really look at it as the destination tourism driver that we think that it can be. And also hopefully do an event this year as well. Um, so that's a little bit about me and a little about about what we've been doing in the past year. Um, to you all, um, having learned a little bit more about the Cultural Council through Matt and Robin, we would love to present or propose to you to create a new event uh, late spring when all the students are still here and part of our community um, to do a block party-esque um, event that would be focused on art and culture, uh, live music, wet paint, um, uh, creating art like right there in front. Um, I was like brainstorming and just thinking about how we could maybe call it the Amity Street Block Party and close off all, you know, Amity Street and take over the parking lots of the Amherst Cinema, uh, Bank of America, 
and also create a community built mural, which has been on our list of something to do for about three years, um, which would be sort of a paint by numbers that anybody ages two through 105 could do. And then the artist would come and kind of finesse it. So it could all culminate in this incredible mural being completed and put up and we could put everybody's names on a plaque next to it. Um, these events, as someone who throws them regularly, are not inexpensive. It would take a collaborative effort of funding to get this and pull it off and uh, work with the artists and, and you know, bring this to something that I think could be really successful. And this could be the first annual uh, collaboration between all of us that could hopefully grow and thrive in our community. <laughs> so I'm going to let you guys ask questions now. <laughs> Good to see you're still enthusiastic. <laughs> Thanks, Robin. <laughs> so at this point, does anybody have, um, sorry, I, I am outside. Uh, does anybody have, you know, I don't know, kind of open up for questions for Gabrielle or or just, I mean, comments in general. I I, I guess a little background for new members. We've, we've said it before, but, um, you know, the local councils have the option um, of spending up to 20% of their annual um, disbursement on a local 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 council initiated programming, as I believe how it's phrased. And so um, our allotment from the state is around 53,000 and change. Um, that number will go up once we figure out how much money has been un has not gone to use with the current cycle. So you know. And, and there, by no means do, do I think we necessarily need to spend all 20% on an event. So like that, but that that's would be the ceiling that we could go to. So that's, you know, somewhere in the 10,000 range, potentially, um, that we could spend on an event. And, you know, I think if it's the right thing, and it feels right for us, um, that, that certainly is, you know, within our purview. Uh, obviously, the you know, the, the counter to that is that, you know, anything we spend on an event doesn't go out to a grantee. And so, you know, I think it's oftentimes best for us to make, to hold off on a final decision on a number until after we go through our, you know, our, our um, grant deliberation cycle and just sort of see how things are shaking out there. But, um, so anyway, I just want to kind of give you a ballpark of what we, what we potentially could be talking about uh, money-wise. Matt, if it's okay, if I just jump in, I, part of this would be getting together a committee who would who would form this event and inform this event. Um, so we would hope that there would be people from the council who would want to create this event and be part of it. And then people from the district um, and then you know some, some local community members who are very invested and interested in seeing like this happen. Um, so it's also kind of a working commitment, not only a financial commitment. Yeah, and one thing I would say um, is that, you know, for members who are not officers who are wondering, I mean, it, it is nice sort of to have side projects like this that are sort of local and, and give, you know, give you a place to, to sort of work on behalf of the council. Um, Rachel, please. Hi, everyone. Sorry, I'm staying off camera because I have a really bad cold. Um, so, Gabrielle, I came in late. Apologies for that. And did you already say how much the um district is is budgeting for this already or it was it 15,000 or was that some other number um, 15,000 is the amount of the total grant that the cultural district will receive from mass cultural uh at large um we are meeting as a group we have yet to have our meeting to discuss the proposed spending of the funds it would not be the entire amount by any means um, because we, we have some other initiatives that we'd like to accomplish as well, but we still have not had um, our group get together and confirm any of this. So we're still in the very baby stages, but we definitely wanted to bring it to you and see if this is something that you'd like to see uh, come together. Thank you. And do you have a similar um, deadline in terms of decision-making as, as our funding cycle or no? In terms we of how do you not. Um, December, I believe the grant has just been announced it's due, I believe, December 18th. So that is when we will have to put in the grant and tell the cultural district what we're planning on doing with the funds.
Thank you. Oh, thank you. And I apologize to everybody. I had a kid need to be picked up and my other people cannot be found. So I had to go. <laughs> Multitasking. Um, I guess I'm curious what you talked to. I loved the idea of kind of like having an artist come in and then like finish up this mural or that's like maybe the seed of an idea. Um, would you just kind of put out feeler to the community and like ask um, for like any local artists who wanted to volunteer for this or I don't know if there was another thought process? Well, this, the, the this is kind of an idea that had to be put to bed because of COVID. Um, we had a local artist named Nikki Abelli, who also runs the Amherst Rec, which was formerly LSSE. Um, this was an idea that we created with her pre-pandemic, and she created this really beautiful paint-by-numbers mural concept. Um, um, and I'd really love to see it come to fruition. And again, this would simply be a part of the entire event. Um, it wouldn't, it would be the culmination, if you will, of, you know, allowing the community to paint, but it wouldn't be the event. Does that make sense? Yes, that does. Thank you. Uh, hey, could you say that name again for the notes? Uh, I just didn't catch it. Uh, uh, Nikki? Um, I, I don't have that for the notes either. Um, I'm working on the notes. Gabrielle, I, I don't, you're breaking up a little bit. What was the name of the Sorry, artist? Can, can, oh, Nikki Abelli, Nicole Abelli. She uh, is one of the forerunners of Amherst Rec. She's mm. also an artist. What I do that. Uh. Because I just came back from Washington and what we did, we did a mural, but we had a lead artist and of course this week was Nationwide, and he flew in out saying this will be the case. But what we did was him have him in a set group paint the mirror. And the community was invited to help out. That way there's a guaranteed number of people working on the meal and it got done. But yeah. Just so I'm clear, are you asking if we would like have signups for to make sure that we had enough people to complete the mural? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I think that that's something we could probably do and work within the community on. Um, but I also think that um, the event itself would really bring people to the mural um so even if you didn't know about it or and we're not really intending to paint the mural that day you might join in and paint it all right did i Probably answer your please. question yeah okay go ahead toby does the artist uh, Nicole, does she already have some of the logistics or the costs that she, that this person would has a ballpark idea of what they would need as far as supplies and, and um, has... so I 
I think in terms of the mural and what that would cost and, and the location, we, we've done a lot of that. Um, that's something that the, the business improvement district would happily will be the funder of. Um, it's more the greater event for artists and artisans and, and makers and musicians that we're discussing. I think the mural is just sort of a small part of it. So I don't want to get too focused on the mural because also, um, if, if anybody hasn't done this in this town, we do have to go through design review board. Um, this will be a permanent. Um, and even though it's on a private building, um, it has to get approval for, for a permit for it. So the one thing that I, you know, um, I would get excited about something that we could show off some of our grantees as well, you know, so, so as we are entering into the deliberation round and we'll be sending out, you know, grant approvals and, and ultimately grant money out to a lot of our artists, if we can communicate to them this date, you know, and, and an idea, I think for me, that's sort of the, one of the really valuable parts of this idea is that this could be a showcase you know we're doing we're doing a video showcase at the Amherst Media right now on some of our previous grantees and and to do a live showcase of some of our other um, grantees I think and that, that could be anything from a performance to a piece to a booth where you just talk about what your organization does um, I think that would be a really exciting way to sort of make things feel more live and um, several Leah especially but several of us you know just have been talking a lot about how how nice it would be to sort of um i'm looking for a better word than press the flesh but you, you know to be in person together with all of our grantees and you know in a kind of a more human way because so i mean literally since i've joined the council it's all been on zoom and and so much of our grantees have been working on zoom that the opportunity to, and the amherst media work is going to be beautiful these showcases are are really exciting these videos but to actually be, you know, physically together with our with our grantees, I think is one really nice aspect of this idea. Yeah, and Matt, if we do this at the scale that we we'd like to, um, we'd have a full stage. So um, dance, um, you know, uh, music, um, you know, uh, uh, theater. I know that the Drake is hosting a couple of your grantees from last year's session. Um, that are not really the Drake sort of genre to normally do, um, but but we're happy to do so because it, we do have the stage and we do have the, the room. But I think that this would be a really great opportunity to take the grantees, um, and it can be you know if 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 there are. I, I'm not sure how many you have a year, but we could even look at this as like a multi-year, like over the past COVID years to say like, this is an opportunity to come and show what you've done um, and what you've created with the grants since, you know, the, you know, the last COVID round. Yeah. I like that idea. We have um, in various, various initiatives, we have gone back a couple of years on grantees and, you know, sent out requests and you're absolutely, you know, people like to say, even if they're not applying in this given year, they like to stay in the orbit and it's, you know, it's a nice community building um, practice. And I also think there are just so many artists that have been, I mean, it's just been impossible. And I'll tell you like, even with a live music space, it's amazing how many people have said that they're just not ready to come inside and they're not ready mm -hmm. to see art and, and, you know, and support artists. So an outdoor venue where it is not only free, but feels very safe and comfortable um, we all hope that by the time we're throwing this event COVID is a far distant memory um, but I've been hoping that for a long time and the numbers aren't going with my hope so um, I think it, it would be a really great opportunity to get not only the artists out but the community who wants to support those artists out to, to hear see and interact with them in a safe place. So Gabrielle, I mean, I think we as a group need some time to sort of talk about other ideas that, you know, we've been percolating on and, and whatnot, but um, what would be helpful for us, you know, given that we're, we're probably not going to be able to, you know, determine a, a dollar number tonight, and it'll probably be not until, until I would say January before we can actually pin down a dollar number, but what would be helpful from us tonight for, for sort of moving this forward or continuing to explore this idea? 
think just the ability to share the concept with you of a arts and you know an arts makers crafts event um, late in the spring. Could this be a collaboration between all of our organizations um, to make it financially feasible um, to do this for the community for free? Um, and talk amongst yourselves. Think about it. Um, once the uh, cultural district um gets our grant application ready to go will be more solid on a thought but we also didn't want to come with anything too formed because we really do feel that this is something that should be created collaboratively instead of us coming and dictating to you what we're doing we want your input i think that's great well you'll certainly you'll certainly get it we i mean we we're a passionate bunch and um you know i think it's it's really it's just it just really is a um special special thing to have these you know these grantees and this huge set of artists and and cultural uh events you know um so it would be nice it would be, i personally i think it would be really nice to find a way to collaborate in some way um just to sort of show off some of our grantees and as a council i think to move towards some in-person programming as well Well, do folks have, if folks have other questions for Gabrielle, now's the time. Otherwise, I think we should um, let her get on with her. Evening. Gabrielle, is, is there a, um, a date for the next district meeting? We're about to send out a doodle. We're, we're sending out a doodle poll, Robin. We, we haven't been able to get a consensus. <laughs> really? <laughs> I know. You're shocked. <laughs> Who would think? Okay. Well, would this be sorry i'm just i got back from work late would this be something we're looking at 2023 spring or yeah when would this event be oh i think we could definitely pull this together for 2023 spring okay yeah leah we can i mean we can we can also fill you in on some of the stuff but but i think the basic idea was a sort of an arts and culture focused block party-esque event in like May of, of 23. Or April, yeah. April or May, yeah. Yeah. Like while the students are still here, but while it's also a little bit on the warm side, <laughs> if we're gonna be outside. Yeah, it does, we wanna push it as late as possible for the sake of weather, yeah. um, because we all we all know how spring can be. Perfect, thank you. Gabrielle, I just wanna say thanks for, for including us and, and for welcoming the collaboration. I think uh, once we're able to um, to really chat about it as a group and, and come back to you with some ideas that um, uh, this, this will be great. And with the success of the block party, why, why not add, add to that? And um, excited to work with you. Great. We are too. All right. Well, thank you very much, Gabrielle. I really appreciate you um, taking the time for us. Thank you all so much. And again, I'm sorry I had to multitask, but um, I really appreciate the time. This has been on my calendar for a while and, you know, snafus happen. <laughs> yeah, it's it's just the, the way it is for all of us. Don't worry about it a bit. Thanks, Gabrielle. All right. You thank guys you, have a great night. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, thank you. So funny, I mean, th you know, that opportunity to sort of hear what the bid cultural district were thinking about came up, you know, after we had sort of agreed to talk about local programming. Um, but I think, you know, we do have on the agenda now and, and I, I would invite you know a little bit of conversation now if folks want to if, if there have been things that you've thought about since our last meeting in terms of um the local activities one thing i'll say is that you know the amount is capped at 20 percent, and that's you know that's a maximum we don't have to use all 20 percent um but it's not the activity it doesn't have to be one activity so in other words you know uh we could do multiple things with that 20 percent i mean are we are we pitching ideas for activities or are we talking about things that are already established? Call it a pitch if you want to. I mean, it sounds like you're um, <laughs> Yeah, I've been um 
I'm writing this like essay so it's been like on my mind but about um, just like with like how to restructure the art world and museums with visual arts and I've been thinking a lot about like early education with the arts so like maybe with community outreach like some work with like like I loved like the public school mural project I love when we fund like the drummer who went into the school's um, I know when I went to the block party, the Mead Art Museum at Amherst College does like a lot of outreach to like kind of engage youth in making art and kind of just, I mean, with our, um, with our like, we, I think one of the biggest ways to increase diversity in all sorts of ways of art is when we just really encourage that at a young age that builds the seeds of this like future generation of like Amherst high school artists and adults eventually. So something that would like, I, I really love the mural because it's something that's really engages the kids in this like way that turns them into artists, but then benefits the public as a whole. Something like that I really like. I don't know, we kind of, I don't know like where we'd get resources to do that, but. Yeah. I I went to this year's street fair and I thought it was very, very good. And uh, I was looking for things that stood out. And, um, and while spitballing for ideas, I always kind of start kind of like superficial or just kind of fun. And one of the things that stood out for me was that they actually had a t-shirt that I think was... Um, something that you didn't just want to throw away but you wanted to keep and I don't know I guess I'm just spitballing but if we if we did a t-shirt you know definitely have something go into it and and I guess make people want to keep it rather than toss like you know spend money on something like that and then toss it but I guess that maybe it's about the sentiment that the idea whatever we do but that we make sure that like, like it's just not throw anything to throw away I don't know I'm just spitballing thinking I like that as well and I think co-creating you know things that can be co-created which you know obviously the early education um, component would, would would include some you know some making of art as well you know what i mean but i i, I like you people to have something to walk away with as well from any event from my perspective i'd particularly like to get behind events you know that that bring people together and and get, encourage collaboration amongst artists and um when I joined the council, you know, one of the reasons was while we have five colleges here, so much of the arts and culture happens in, in the classrooms, and I wasn't seeing it in the community the way one, one might think. Um, that's one of the reasons we had, had tried to do the Pecha Kucha night was, you know, to get creative people up in front of uh, the community and have them present the work that we're doing, you know. Um, I still think that you know, when, when COVID's no longer on the table, that that would be really exciting. And I'm excited about um, this counterpoint block party in the spring uh, because it sounds like it would be more focused on on art perhaps than, than what we have in the fall, which is, you know, wonderful for the kids, but maybe this might um, have, you know, a, a, a larger age range with that. Um, and, and really highlight artists and of course musicians and everything too. Yeah, I was thinking about um, the Pecha Kucha as well. Um, I, I don't know, I, I love the idea of a block party kind of thing a lot, but I was kind of thinking about how we could maybe like marry the two ideas together um, and maybe not exactly, but like I love the idea of like having various stands set up or something with like local artists to kind of present their work and also like to allow people to engage in their medium in some way, I think could be really cool. So I don't know, that's what I was thinking about. It, I mean, to be clear, we don't necessarily have to choose 
to support the block party or do Pecha Kucha. I mean, Pecha Kucha, in my mind, works better as a more intimate kind of social event and, and yeah. hosted on a regular basis. It all comes down to really a financial decision about how much of the max of the 20% that we have on hand do we utilize? Um, and, and then, you know, for anything that we are supporting, how much do we need to get it done? Um, Pecha Kucha had a, had a price tag before because we were particularly going to rent out that back room over at Bistro 63. You know, who knows? Maybe, maybe if I reach out to Angela, there's a way to do it at the Drake where, you know, there's, there's a free night and the costs are different. So this is all to be explored. And, you know, there've been lots of other ideas we can come up with, with our own ideas as well. But like Matt said, anytime we make this kind of decision, it's, it's funds that we're taking out of the grant pool, right? So one of the things we very much wanted to do with Pecha Kucha was um, so that it's accessible to the public, it would be free, but we were really going to be pretty active about uh, requesting donations um, because we felt that at a worst case, it should break even, right? And ideally, we'd like to have some of these events that actually generate additional funds to go out to the community. So that would be a really powerful concept if there is if there is something that can actually generate more funds than we're getting from the state, that'd be great. And I don't know what that is, but just all of this is stuff to think about. Rachel? Yeah, so the reason I was asking um, earlier about the timing of when to make these decisions um, in part is that we as a council, obviously we don't need to decide this today or you know, we don't need to decide it until probably towards the end of our um, grant decisions is that we as a council ought to think about depending on the type of applications we get and how many are of like proposing similar types of projects. Like do we, how do we kind of divvy up the money? You see what I mean? So if there are other, let's say we get other proposals, grant proposals that want to host similar types of events. And, and if we want to have, you know, a diverse pool of activities, I'm just saying that that's something to have in the back of our minds in terms of, um, you know, how much up to the 20% we think as a council, we want to designate towards this to support that effort. Does that make sense? I think Matt's frozen. I can't tell that that does make sense. And, and I would say that, um, we really probably, we're not in a position to make a decision about any of that right now tonight, but these decisions do need to be made um, in, in, in conjunction and in alignment with uh, the total grant cycle. Um, because, you know, we're not, we wouldn't just hold on to money, hold money out of uh, giving it to grantees unless, you know, we all had voted on a clear purpose for it that benefits the community because it provides no public benefit for us to just sit on money. <laughs> right, so that's what I'm saying. It's like how much of that we're gonna give to you know this particular initiative, um, depending on what else, what other applications we get, what types of activities or, or projects are being proposed. So that's just, yeah, like you said, it doesn't have to be decided anytime soon. Yeah. I have, I have a question about um, some more finance stuff. Um, is the cultural district district wanting us to pay for, like wanting some of the block party if we're involved, is that coming out of this budget? And also is the possible like accessibility thing with Amherst Media also in this 20% budget? So the um, Amherst Media project is FY22 funds that we've already kind of set aside. Oh, right, sorry. For that work. But yes, so that was that was kind of the um, the pitch with Gabrielle is that the cultural district, the cultural council, potentially some other kind of similar entities chipping in to, to create more of an arts and culture focused event. But, you know, I think as as Rachel, um, especially, but I think everybody has kind of said, um, we don't have to decide anytime soon in terms of how much we could pitch in. I think that's there. There will we there will need to be an ongoing discussion with, you know, the bid cultural district around 
how much is this event? You know, what's how much how much how much would we like to spend on this event? And then of course, you know, how much do we actually have to spend on which are not always the same thing. So it's you know that's where sort of that ongoing dialogue comes in. And um, you know, I think I, I think as as Julianne said, when the numbers start to become more and more real as we start working on the grant actual grant process, um, I think that's when we'll start to have a better sense of how much we can and want to chip in on this or on, on any kind of you know local activities. Um, but yeah, I think I think one thing that you know makes this a, a possible reality is that the cultural district by itself, the bid by itself probably can't afford to put on you know a full-fledged type block party. So it it would take you know pooling of funds. I think I heard an idea from someone that the we as a cultural council could possibly apply for grants. Did I hear this somewhere? Yes. Yeah, that Is was that your that idea. Was, yeah, that, we that have. was my idea. We have, um, yeah. there's, okay. there is an activities grant that is available through MCC and there is a deadline for it, which is not, um, uh, it's not forever. <laughs> like it's, it's in December, I believe. Um, and that activities grant, I'm trying to search for it really quick, I believe is another 15,000. It's a, it's a fairly substantial amount of money that we can apply for and would be a, we'd be a shoe in just to be like, I, I was told by Jay Wong, you know, like, Cultural councils are the you know the main recipient of this kind of grant, um, so it would take me a minute, but but that would be a nice chunk of money that we certainly could just go out and get um, directly. So thank you for bringing that up. We should yeah. decide if we want to apply for that. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of I I hadn't really thought of that, but I mean if we can apply for money and receive it, you know that really does fit into our due diligence and our charter and why we exist. That we we should be sure to get all the money we can for the community. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And and frankly, Gabrielle, what what Gabrielle just spoke about. I mean, we could literally just put in for we could put in for that as a local council. And secure those funds, and then that's a that's a nice start to, you know, to the conversation. Right, but it has to be written. <laughs> so it's a pretty short. It's it's a pretty straightforward thing. But yes, some it does have to be written. I I I don't know if this is the time to propose, but it, but I can't do to write the grant right now. But if someone felt they could do that, I. Would totally support us applying for that and then taking that money and putting it into this kind of project that Gabrielle was proposing. And then we still have the rest of the other money to yeah. give to grantees or whatever we want. So it's called the Festivals and Projects Grant. And it's actually it's only 2500 So it would not be it really wouldn't be enough to to get the block party going, but it would be, you know, enough <laughs> enough to get. Yeah. So, um, Robin, was that a mo that sounded like almost? Well, I, I didn't know if I could make a motion for that now. I don't know what people are feeling, but if I can, then I would like to make a motion that, well, except that I could somebody else write this grant because I can't do it right now um, to apply for it. And then we apply for it so that we use it to participate in producing this block party. That's the bid and the district want to collaborate with us and probably others to, to produce in the spring. If we get that grant, would it actually take away from the 20%? No. Okay. No, just the opposite. It would leave us all that, you know, that money. But what I meant is like, can we still give them 20% on top of that grant? Oh. Yes, we could. Good. In 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 principle, I was just curious. Yep. Yeah, so it's called a oh. festival. Um, it's called a uh, festivals and projects grant. And, and on the topic of people doing the work, um, was the proposal to have um, council members helping out this, or or to have council members help recruit other volunteers? I didn't catch that part. Do you write it or to, my reluctance in making a proposal is that 
I'm proposing it, but I'm not able right now to write it. And somebody in in the ACC would have to write it since the ACC is applying for it, if I'm understanding what the grant is. So, yeah. Yeah, that's a good that's a good point, Rob. So, I mean, I'm very familiar with the grant and the system. It's it's very straightforward. I'd be happy to help somebody um, who wanted to do it. It'd be great if a non officer wanted to just sort of you know give it a shot. It's it really is a very straightforward um, like a very short application, and we're, I don't want to say shoe in, but you know, we yeah, should. should be. Yeah. I am have to focus on like my college application, so I don't think I can do that, but. I actually, I would be happy to help out with it. I feel like I don't know how much of an ask it would, I would be because I feel like I know almost nothing about that process, but. But you'll I, get to learn this way on an easier grant. Mm -hmm. Anything that I could do to help out or work with you, Matt, I would do. That'd be great. So I, I will second Robin's motion. I think it, we definitely need to get these funds. I thank you, Julianne, for reminding me because I totally spaced on that. Um, but yeah, it's it's twenty five hundred dollars that are sitting there that we should scoop up and and put to a good use. Am I sorry? I'm advocating for the motion. <laughs> but, You're but seconding I, I, the motion. I, I'm seconding and advocating at the same time. That's right. Um, any discussion about it? I guess the only thing that that is probably worth just bearing in mind, and we can work this in, Eleanor, is um, if for some reason this particular block party idea does not launch, you know, we would then have the burden of repurposing the money for something else. And, you know, I think we would, we would just have to deal with that if that if that comes to fruition. There are worse problems. Yeah. Well, but it's, yeah, we, we'd write something in there that would say, you know, a little bit of conditional language just so we could sure, okay. wiggle. Okay, thank you for, uh, okay, so um, let's, let's do a vote unless there's other discussion. Um, Rachel? Yes, and thank you, Eleanor, for volunteering. Yes. <laughs> Julianne? Yes. Cody? Yes. Uh, Leah? Oh, yes. Eleanor? Yes. And Toby? Christy, leave us? Yes. Great. Who, yeah, oh, Christy. Yeah, she fell out. No, she's on a train. So. Oh, she was? I didn't. Yeah. Miss that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, um, that's a good excuse, though. Although I had to move inside my car because the, anyway. Um, <laughs> so great. So so the motion passes, and we will definitely um, get that application up and in. It's great. So, um, and I I will just say too that you know as we go into the deliberation cycle and we start reviewing grants, um, as further ideas come up, you know we can certainly dedicate some time in in those meetings. To talking about local activities too as you know as the money starts to take shape and new ideas come up and, and folks talk to folks so i think it's it's good to just sort of have an open thread of dialogue running on this and i'm i'm really grateful to you know particularly um well cody and eleanor for asking a lot of questions at our, at our first meeting but to everybody for just sort of um starting this conversation early because i think you know i'm excited to do some stuff in person i, I think it's been um, missing in my experience at the Cultural Council, and, and several of us have really not had, had that experience. Um, Julianne, do you want to kind of talk us through the deliberation cycle as, as it stands right now? I sure do. Okay. Um, so a little bit of uh, shopkeeping first, and I'm, I'm sorry for the very, very, very short notice, but it is urgent that uh, I get responses on all of those doodle uh, or the doodle poll that was sent out. And, and here's why we have a slate of deliberation meetings planned and uh, we need to have a quorum to have these. So if the plan that we currently have 
uh, if there are certain dates where we are truly short a quorum, then I'm going to have to propose other dates to everyone. Uh, and I'm happy to do that. But um, the current cycle right now, it closes uh, as of next Monday. And I was just poking around in here. It looks like there are about 66 applications in there. Matt, have you looked recently? I just looked um, before the meeting. So there's a whole bunch of drafts. That yeah, have, exactly. But I mean, people who have, have drafts are probably. Most of them probably will. Yeah. Submit. So yeah, it was, I think, 28 and 27. Yeah. Probably yeah. still have it open. So yeah, it, my guess is it's probably going to be about 60. Or yeah, yeah, more, which is less there. than last year. Yeah, but there's still probably some folks who, you know, they, yeah, they'll apply over the weekend or what have you. So mm -hmm. uh, we've got about the same number that we usually do. And, and why that matters is um, we certainly want to uh, give quality deliberation time to each one of these grants. Um, and we're basically planning based on what we had last year. And it looks like we're pretty well in line to have about the same volume this year going forward. So uh, we do want to do some things differently. Let me just run through the dates real quick. So the grants close on the 17th. And after that, we'll be waiting to be able to first get the digital PDF. Uh, once the digital PDF is ready, uh, we'll coordinate with, with Angela to be able to have paper books printed for anyone who would like them. Um, the paper books are, are, you know, literally yay thick. They're, they're, they are large. Uh, so, but we are happy to, to make those for anybody who would like them. Uh, is there anyone here who has a preference for digital versus paper? Are you asking us to? Yeah, yeah. Robin, are you a, 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 a you're paper. The, or anyone else need a paper copy? No. No, I, I, I work from the digital. I'm happy to do that. Anyone else? Okay. No one else? Okay. Leo, you wanted paper last year. Still want digital? Do you want digital? Um, I'm honestly happy with either. I I found it really difficult to go back and forth. Yeah, maybe I'll, I, may, I might take a paper one because I do like marking it up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Okay, so we will uh, arrange to have the paper copies made. And then the good news about the digital copies um, is just that we can get started a little sooner because uh, mm -hmm. they're available faster. So. Uh, because what, what we'd like to do, Matt um, had a great idea last year. Just, just that one since last year, Matt, that's the only good. <laughs> um, it was a good year for me, actually. Yeah, yeah. So we've had an evolution of kind of scoring and ranking and validating um, the grant applications over, over the last several years, I guess. Um, Everything was done on paper, and then I, I came in and I said, oh, gosh, we should be able to do something with Excel, and then Rachel improved on it. But um, basically, where we ended up last year was Matt asked that everyone really at a bare minimum kind of say, you know, would you fully fund this grant, yes or no? Um, and we'd like to build on that and simplify at the same time. So what we have in any particular uh, grant year, let me see if I can open, I'm gonna open the digital PDF, give me just a second. And I'll, I'll share the screen here. I'm gonna have some, some examples. For all of the, the grants, um, Sorry, I'm, a, I'm screen share challenged here. Why are you doing that there? Right now there are 25 drafts and 29 submitted grants. So yeah, we'll probably have. 
Okay. At least 60. Sure. So one of the things that's most challenging about understanding um, whether to fund a grant or not is really just kind of going through it. And it's a great process and I'm really excited for our new members um, that you'll be going through this with us. But um, I certainly learned a lot from going to the physical in-person meetings and discussing uh, the grants and, and hearing what the criteria was to uh, accept fully fund versus, versus reject. And you know, I would have had no way of knowing that um, coming in the door having not, not done it before. Uh, but to make things more efficient, what we'd like to do this year is have everyone, once they get the digital copy, do a, a quick evaluation of all of the grants uh, to determine basically, uh, yes, I fully support it. No, I'm opposed. I wouldn't fund this at all. Or I'm somewhere in the middle, you know. So how would we get to the point where all of us could do that? And why do we want to do that? Well, one of the reasons we, we want to do it is previously we, we've gone through the grants alphabetically. And in, you end up spending a lot of time on the ones that here the applicant name begins with an A. And then by the time we get to the end, we're like just really rushing through um, and, and trying to keep to our hard deadlines so that we're able to um, finalize which grants are in, which ones we're rejecting and have the appeal process, which all of it is really fun. It happens pretty much over Christmas and when everybody's shut down and, and away. Um, but we have to have the whole thing final with all of the steps by January 17th. So to, to stay on schedule for that, um, we have to have several meetings. We get to have several meetings and uh, we need to, to work through the grants quickly. So I thought it might be useful tonight to kind of go through some, some examples here from prior years. I'm gonna to try to do this quickly. And, um, because what we'd like to have you do is um, go through some grants and just taking uh, the summary of it here, come up with your own idea of whether you think that this is something that uh, should be funded or not. I've got, I've got a few examples, so let me kind of go through. So this is a project highlighting the work of emerging playwrights, um, centering on the work of queer playwrights, playwrights of color. It was with the Five College Consortium to provide significant opportunities for matriculating students to produce their own work. Uh, but once the students graduated, it was hard for them to find venues and funding to produce their work. So they proposed that they would produce a selection of uh, fully produced short plays, emerging playwrights, allowing them space to refine their work and find new audience, uh, audiences and collaborators. Um, the project highlighted will be from communities whose work is typically underrepresented on stage. And the project will also feature the work of both emerging and established actors and directors and will build sustainable connections within the areas, theater and communities. So um, for this particular grant, I'm just going to, to kind of jump to the end here. This had tremendous support uh, from, from the council and was one of our stronger grants last year. Um, why would that be? It's, it's supporting um, communities that are generally underrepresented um, as far as the benefit to the community here. Uh, the performance was free and, and uh, they did have sliding scale donations and uh, their public benefit statement was, was strong as well. So for something like this, we would be asking you pretty much just to read summary, who the audience is and, and you know, what the public benefit is. Does anyone have any questions on this so far? So now 
I'm going to flip to um, to two that um, were not funded at all in the end. So the summary of, of this was uh, this was the Chamber of Commerce this was the Chamber of asking to present something called Resilience Habits for Busy Business People, which um, was a they're calling it a happiness experiment. You know, we all like happiness. Um, and the audience was um, business owner, owners and managers in Western Massachusetts. Uh, they listed it as free. And um, this one ended up being rejected because uh, it wasn't going to be promoted to the public. It was really for people who were part of the Chamber of Commerce and you have to pay to be part of the Chamber of Commerce. Um, and we spent quite a bit of time about evaluating it because nobody wants to shut down happiness, but our events do have to be free and open to the public. And if you have to be a member of the Chamber of Commerce, then it's not really truly free or open to the public in the same way. They were missing a piece there. Another one, um, that uh, the right bookmark here. Yeah, special names, yeah. This, this was a, a, a tough one, but in this case, um, this grant was, was really going to benefit people within, within the school system. And uh, we had to question whether the Cultural Council was, was really the best grant program for, for this um, because it was, we do fund um, events and uh, within, within the schools, but, um, and anyone who's here from, from last year who wants to, to chime in on this as to why we didn't fund it, uh, feel free, Matt. I think you had you were particularly um, careful about this one last year. So uh, it might make it it might be helpful to also let our new new members know about sort of the um, criteria that we mm -hmm. wind up funding them on because you know our our conversations are pretty rich and nuanced and I actually don't remember specifically what it was with this one that we decided against, um, but I. We, we basically, in our letters, the MCC website only really allows us to have a handful of actual criteria for, mm -hmm. um, for rejection or denial. And in the vast majority, I want to say 99% of the denials we had last year, um, we just said, you know, the public benefit was not sufficient, you know, and, and that's kind of, that's like boilerplate language that the mm -hmm. Mass Cultural Council gives us. And so we would send out that letter and, and you know use that phrase. And then Julianne and I typically are the ones who have the follow-up conversations with folks who are denied, who want to know a more, and of course, there's always a more textured, nuanced you know, rationale behind those denials. And, um, and that is a fairly like, delicate part of the process, to be, to be honest. Um, and so this one, I'm pretty sure if I went back and checked, it would be, you know, the, it was the, local benefit was was not adequate um and um so so i guess that's what i would say is that as we're doing this you know there will be a lot of sort of shades of gray and ambiguity in the discussion but the list i don't have it right here in front of me but the the list of actual reasons why that we're actually going to put into the um into the notice is a fairly is a fairly short list it's mm -hmm. public benefit concerns about the application itself um I'd have to I'd have to go back and check. Lack of venue, lack of dates, wow. lack of benefit, really. Yeah. So this one they were asking for over four thousand dollars <coughs> to call. This but year they're putting it for five hundred. For for which one? I'm sorry, the special needs. Yep. The and special they put it back in again. advocacy. Yep, but for five hundred. Yeah. So I think we just were not clear also on um, who this benefits, how they figured out. This number of students, they mm -hmm. said, mm -hmm. um, and and that is it really in the purview of the cultural council, because this seemed more about 
even though they talked about there being, you know, separate cultures, which of course there are this, to us and to me, several of us who really push for the disability stuff, just, it wasn't, it just wasn't making it. Yeah. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of, there are a lot of discussions about them and we really do yeah. talk about this stuff a lot. So um, it, it just didn't make it, e even for me. <laughs> and we, we do fund most of the grants partially, yeah. you know, um, some of them at a higher percentage, um, others at a, at a lower percentage. There, there was uh, this one, which was uh, a painting class and it had two four hour sessions outdoor. Um, and, you know, we were able to go and review this particular artist's work, quality technique. And um, one of the things we struggled with was that uh, it, it was only uh, 12 participants. And in this case, we, we did fund it, uh, nowhere near fully funding it because, you know, once we discussed it, this was people actually making art, you know, and, and, and getting their own hands dirty to make art. And, uh, and it was community coming together. Um, so, uh, it, it did have public benefit, um, and, and we reflected, uh, I think the, the amount they were asking for was really quite large. Yeah, it was, it was a thousand dollars. And I think we maybe, this is light appreciation. Through yeah. Uh, so, so the grant was in the, in the neighborhood of 200 or $250, which when we looked at 12 people participating and, and thinking about, um, the public benefit, you know, for such a small group, um, that, that we had to, to kind of tailor it to that. So nothing that you put down as far as, you know, whether you're, you're, you would fully fund it or, or you question funding it at all. I mean, none of that is final. What we're going to be able to do with this though, is as we, um, go through our deliberation meetings, uh, we're going to, to actually time box the deliberation discussions for any of these particular grants. I don't know what that time's going to be, but you know, let's, let's say it's a max of 10 minutes that we would spend on any grant uh, in, in the opening session, because what we want to do is to get through and at least open the discussions on all of the grants, right? And, with the information from the group here, as far as if if it comes back with a particular grant that you know no one champions it, uh, and and we have pretty much people saying I wouldn't fund it at all, and someone saying I might, but you know I don't know. It's a different discussion. Likewise, you know we have spectacular grants that come back, and and it ticks bo the boxes for everyone, and. You know, there, there, there isn't necessarily the same need to to have a lengthy uh, discourse on a grant where everybody fully supports it. We know that we're going to fund it. Just you know, how much can we give them? Uh, so that will shape our conversation based on your initial review. And once we get through all of the grants, then we'll be able to go back to the ones that require longer discussions that we weren't able to take care of in, in the, the initial time box of, you know, we're conceptually right now, we're saying 10 minutes or something like that. Eleanor, did you have a question? No, I, you answered it. I was just thinking. Okay, okay. Uh, Rachel has a question. Shoot, Rachel. Yeah, two questions. One is, um, do you want us to having kind of done a quick overview of all the grants just make notes on our own and then no, we'll, the meeting and we'll provide a, an excel again you know okay yeah. the other question i was i was going to ask is that as a council um is there because this didn't even occur to me until i saw the northampton arts council kind of mm -hmm. call for proposals and they say very clearly in their um kind of listing that rarely do they fully fund any project 
So I'm not saying that we need to follow that example, but I'm just, I, because I think that there is, um, sometimes we might fully fund something because they're asking for so little, right? Um, and we support the project. So I just, I'm just raising that as a question. I have no opinion on that. I, I know as far as our, our um, public sessions, both Matt and I were really transparent saying that most of this is partial funding. Yeah. Um, and that we in, are really looking to see that the, the grantees have contingency plans, have multiple sources of funding. You froze. Yeah. I froze. Yeah. Okay. Oh, thank okay. you. Yeah. I, I don't know where it cut off, but yeah, we were very clear about that in, in our uh, public sessions. Yes, Matt. So, um, I mean, this is so. This is going to be an interesting, interesting process. And I think if if I was a new member, or you know, or just mm -hmm. trying to put myself in your shoes, I guess I would I would um, okay. recommend two things, you know, or I guess three things. Um, first of all, you know, you're going to have sixty to seventy of these grants to sort of review, and I think your your best bet is to sort of read through them when the when the material comes to you we'll, we'll, ha we'll have three or four weeks to review the um the packet before our first meeting so just kind of reading through them and and just reacting authentically like just reacting authentically to does this project strike you as as being worthy of merit because there's going to be lots of time for us to discuss and and fine tune our opinions and as julianne is saying you know how much we give but but really you know your your instinct in reading these things is really valuable. It's why you're on the council. Um, and so, you know, although some of us have been through the cycle a couple of times, at the end of the day, you know, we, we want your authentic, just sort of human reaction to the, the grants. Like, does this strike you as something that will bring benefit to the community? So I wanted to just say that. And then um, I would just say that, I, Juliana, if you don't mind, I will share my screen. I, I can show the denial letter. So the oh, folks, sure. can see, folks can see specifically what areas we did we we might deny on um, which i think is helpful but i would say uh make sure before you do that read through or that skim through of the big panel book number one look closely at our council guidelines because that's really the main you know th that's the only thing we can actually award against or for is our guidelines um, so that's number one and then number two is the lcc the local council guidelines that the that the state puts out um, and that's linked on our guidelines because <clears throat> really if you're fluent in our guidelines and in that book more or less um you'll you know you'll be more than ready to to participate in this i want to uh, add on to that matt that one of the reasons i'm saying to look at the summary and the public benefit piece is once you get the book that's this thick i we're certainly not asking you to do independent reading and, and read every single thing that the applicants are putting in and support and everything else. Matt's word, use use your instinct for this, is exactly correct. But just to, to get started, I'm not asking anyone to fully digest all of this. Uh, just, just get a feel for it and use your instinct is what we're asking. And I think it, at that level, it, it's certainly manageable and, and much more efficient to go into this um, Clearly, knowing where the, where the group is and you know where concerns are. So I want to just show folks the denial letter since since you actually brought up a, a, a kind of a complex application from last year. Uh, you know, this is so as as we go through getting a feel for which which applications people really want to champion full funding for, and which applications people really don't want to fund at all is helpful because those tend to be the most difficult conversations. Um, but I just wanted to show this is this is the actual denial letter that was sent to that group, and um, this, there's only three areas. So the first area, your project is not clearly related to arts, humanities, or science. That happened to this, this application. That happened to be our criteria. This is actually the only application that we use that criteria on last year. Most commonly is the second one. Uh, you know that it just it didn't provide enough public benefit to the community compared to other proposals we received. And then the third one, as you can see, is an area where, you know, if our council guidelines have some other area that the grant didn't meet, then, you know, we could, we would literally fill that in there. 
So I just wanted to show show that to folks. Ultimately, I mean, and and believe me, like the conversation will be nuanced, and, and we want to consider, you know, a rich a rich, but but ultimately it'll have to be reduced down to one of those three um, reasons. And one <laughs> last thing to to add is that I, I see your hand, Cody. Um, is that even even when we send out that rejection letter, folks can still appeal. So the rejection in and of itself is not hard and fast, and not that many people write back an appeal. So, um, you know, it, it, it's from from my perspective, it's a very fair process. You know, if, if we're rejecting and they're not appealing, then uh, you know they were just requesting the funds. Cody, yeah. Yeah, I had a quick question. I see a lot of people saying this is an outdoor event. So, you know, we all still in this weird time of COVID post COVID, do we consider or a thousand people in a small place? Let's not fund that because that could be a super spread or don't we? Good, good question as far as at, at this stage, is the council uh, being asked to weigh from a public benefit perspective whether we are putting the community at, at risk. And uh, that's been interesting as we went through it. As I said, our first Pecha Kucha, uh, we ended up canceling. Uh, it was two days before we, I guess, went into lockdown because, because of concern that it, it could be a spreading event. At this point, things have evolved quite a bit. I will leave that to the health department and you know, to the extent that people, they, they are going to concerts, they are going to sporting events, they are gathering and not social distancing. So uh, I, I, I don't believe that that's something that we as a council have to, to decide and that the, the health department should, should be deciding that. So the questions that are still kind of pandemic related is some communities are still looking at, at virtual events to, to stay safe. Uh, we, we do still accept virtual events. And again, this is gonna come down to using your, your instinct as you read through this. You know, does this event as a virtual event truly provide community benefit? Um, we, we definitely had to take a lot of the uh, target audience and number of people served with a grain of salt uh, in, in the virtual events. You know, we were, we were getting artists saying, I'm, yeah, I'm gonna reach 500,000 people with this because it's virtual. So uh, just again, just use your instinct as, as you go through. Great question, Cody, thank you. Well, I'll, can I, so mm -hmm. it's hard to do. We don't really have the time and the structure, but might, and there's just a suggestion, want to just think about, you know, if we have 20 classical music proposals, yeah, we, and there, we, you know, about a variety of it, as well as, you know, if there's like, 30 within two months of each other and not necessarily a lot, you know, spreading them out. I, I don't know how we consider that and I don't know how we figure that well, out, but. I'm so glad you brought it up because we, uh, I'm going to see if I can't find um, the, uh, I can't put the, the link in because we, we can't use the chat. 
But we did add <clears throat> uh, to our um, guidelines this last year. Um, let's see. Uh, to be able to consider that because we did not have that clearly stated before. Um, Especially with classical music. <laughs> yep. Um, let me see if I can find specific to that. Um, recommendations. Yeah, there, we added some language as I recall, I'm looking for it. Mm -hmm. okay. But it basically comes down to, to public benefit. And we now have reserved yeah. the, the right to prioritize um, to, to assure Compared that- Compared to other mm -hmm. proposals. Yep. yep. We, we cover that. Okay. So uh, I, I would hope that everyone could try to, to respond to that doodle uh, back to me. Today would be great. Sorry, I'm a little pushy here. Um, <laughs> Uh, we we did get uh, responses from five out of nine. So um, with the we'll be clear about quorums once we have the the other uh, four of you completing that. I also, I don't know if I would be able to do any twelve to one meetings. Mm -hmm. um, That's understandable. But yeah, I, I would be know. able. To, oh yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Leah, sorry. Oh, I was gonna say I can do like one to two, but that's not really helpful because I don't know if other people can. Yeah, we'll, we'll just have to like 90 minutes, Julian. The, okay, the noon meetings are one hour. Oh. And then the evening meetings are, are 90 minutes. And um, anyone who was with us in prior years, we often ran over on our deliberation mm -hmm. meetings and to even be able to consider a noon meeting, you know, we, we can't run over, which is one of the reasons that, that Matt and I um, have come up with the concept of time boxing, you know, the, the, the per grant discussion so that we, we do move through and, and at least get the open the discussions on all of them uh, before we end up in lengthier conversations on, on some. So yeah, the, the lunchtime meeting absolutely must be an hour. And, and really for, for everyone's lives, I say as we're getting uh, six minutes from 7.30 here, nine, 90 minutes in the evening is, is quite a lot, you know, and to the extent that we can keep to that, that would be great. Um, we really need to. So with that, um, Matt, you're muted, but we, we do have a few more uh, items on, on the agenda, I guess really, I don't, I don't know of any new business, so it's really just one, one more item on the agenda. Yeah, so the, um, the one thing that I will say is one really great change that um, the state has made, in, in my opinion anyway, is um, two or more council members can approve a, a small modification to a grant, like specifically, not, not financial, but if, you know, if they want to push their deadline back, change their venue, little things like that. That's going to be a big benefit to us. Um, so we do have one such case that happened since our last meeting, but I'm actually waiting for them to give me their date um, in terms of the actual performance before we, because what we'll do is we then will just come back and say, put it on the record, kind of like, you know, we are approving so-and-so to reschedule their grant performance from now until, you know, a certain date, but we don't have that date yet for it. So I'm just going to sit on that one. Um, I, that was the only grant update that I that I had on the tip of my tongue. Um, Robin continues to you know do an incredible amount of work in terms of turning around these financial reports. Um, thank you to Cody and Rachel for agreeing to weigh in. Cody and I looked actually we took a little bit of time to look at the um, the Smart Simple website just so he can see some of the reporting features that go on in there. And Robin, if you guys haven't connected yet, I think you're in really good hands in terms of tech <laughs> tech support slash you know well, I mean. I which is in the same place, so. <laughs> right, and that, and that aspect definitely crossed my mind too, that it's nice for you to be able to connect in person and occasionally, you know, whatever whatever you need in terms of helping with the, the process. So I think, you know, I, I feel really great about, um, you know, that and, and I'm happy that both uh, Cody and Rachel are willing to help out um, on that front. So just, you know, great appreciation to you both on that front. Um, 
I'm really happy you have the help with the uh, 2022 report being due, I guess, Monday, right? And that's exciting because whatever remains from 2022, well, I can tell I guess, you, 2023. I can tell you what that is. <laughs> um, I mean, I just want to go over it one more time. So that will have been gone over like 10 times, but it's a lot of money. So we've got the 50. We've got the 53,800, 53,800, and then we will probably have $23,051 and 46 cents. I'm not sure where that came from. Oh, that's a big chunk. We allocated. Some of it is from 21, and some of it's from 22 that people never submitted for contracts. So people should keep in mind that we are at direct granting. That means when we give them a grant, as long as they get the contract back, we give them the money. Um, and so, you know, if we're not sure it's gonna, it's realistic. I think we need to consider that. That's part of the deliberation though. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, so at this point, they've run past the deadline, right, Robin? They can no longer. I, unless there were, um, unless we gave them a specific, well, no, 2022, right. If they have not given us the contract, they're way past the deadline and I released it for 2023 to be used in 2023. Well, you know what's interesting, Robin? Um, so the 23 grant award letter says you have 12 months from the issuance of that letter to apply for your money. And so we're going to actually hit that 12 month point right at our dead at our deadline for the deliberations here um so that, that's gonna be uh, i don't think we'll be isn't able that to reimbursement repurpose those funds in this current cycle no okay we should no, if you if you look at um yeah we can right, we can so, talk a little bit offline yeah i, I haven't submitted it yet so that. we should talk about that well i don't think you i don't think we're gonna so i'm gonna open one up just a random one that, that i just pulled up and so this is an approval letter and what we told them was um, uh, uh, project completion. Da, 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 da. Project completion. No, I know, but there is a. Um, well, we said please complete this within two weeks. Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe I'm wrong. Maybe maybe it's for the only reimbursements. I think it's yeah. reimbursements, and if it's not, we just need to make sure that doesn't happen. Yeah. The next, because it was our first time. It's you know we're. Mm -hmm figuring it out because with the direct granting we if we gave them the money we gave them the money right mm -hmm. it's 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 yep. out there so as far as 2020 well, they their, just to clarify that point though if they didn't re return their grant agreement that's mm -hmm. the we case didn't give them the money. Like Robin's talking about, yeah we didn't give them the money exactly so right. there there is some unknown here as far as folks that received money don't complete their project and give the money back to us. We don't really have control <laughs> over that's, it coming back. So well, that's not you know. the case well, that Robin just brought up, though, is when mm -hmm. folks we made the decision to give, you know, Joe Schmo a thousand dollars for his play. We mm -hmm. sent him a letter and said, You can have a thousand dollars. And he didn't fill out the one page paperwork that spurs that money. So we can so roll we that forward. Know. No problem. I'm rolling it forward. Yes, yeah. exactly. Unless. Well, Okay, could we ask? We, I, I think we might need to notify them that we're going to roll that forward. Then. Why? We told them to return like, the contract, and but it's there's month. no hard deadline. We said please return it within two weeks, but that's not a being polite winding deadline. All right. Well, how how much time has passed? I'd say at this point, if people haven't gotten their direct grant funds for 2022, which have been available for months, it's yes. done. And didn't tell us. It's just there is that their responsibility that was just that one little thing they needed to do from a public um, benefit point of view we need to get that into the hands of people who will do something with it i mean we it unless they ask so that's why i gave all that stuff that i think the next contract needs to be very clear you need to get this money back you know the contract back or we will assume you don't want it that kind of thing because uh, you know we just started doing this but as far as i'm concerned they they haven't applied for it you know yeah. i mean yeah we gave i mean we gave them a two week we gave them a two week deadline several people reached out and said hey i can't make that deadline because i'm out of the country or something well, in yeah. those cases we worked with them right. so i mean 
Uh, yeah. So it's, true, I, I so it's 10 you. months. Yeah. No, I know, but I, I agree with you. We need to make that more explicit this year because, yes. you know, right. just because we give you a deadline, you know, there, that also <laughs> means that if you don't meet this deadline, you're not going to get the funds. We didn't say that part. <laughs> we said, we said, this is your deadline. We didn't say if you don't meet this right, deadline. Right, but yeah. in the but, real world. No, that's fine. I agree. <laughs> no, but I agree. You want to talk about it before I submit the report? No, I, I agree with you. I, I mean, I think I think we can do it and we should, but I also think we need to be more explicit this year because. Yes, which I said and I was going to redo. So, um, and anything that was left over from 21 is totally released. I mean, you know, it's not going to be used. Um, so that's why we have so much money. Because yeah. quite a few people did not submit. Well, sadly, that's also COVID. Anything. I think COVID really, I, 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 we're still I, getting I, events that just didn't come together. And right. yeah, so um, I think people didn't know if they were going to use this, so they didn't submit the contract, which organizationally is a nightmare if that happened a lot. So it only happened once so far, but um, I know, but this is the reality. We are in COVID and we all have to figure it out and it's not going to be perfect. And it'll be steps and stages and we'll change it, but we still have to be financially responsible so, 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 I, so I, I, I do have to bring us to an adjournment um unless there's any pressing business only um, people, I, oh so just gonna say if anybody else wants a hard copy let me know because as soon as it's available i'm gonna go have it printed and i was quickly gonna ask is there a reason for meetings for deliberation, we're sticking to Monday and Wednesday because those days happen to be like my heavy dance days. I, but also if there is, I don't know if I was like not here for discussion of that, but like whatever is easiest for the whole council works. At, at this stage, you know, it, it's coming down to trying to assure that we have a quorum. So, right. I'll, I'll most likely be reaching out about additional days because in some cases we don't have a quorum. So um, no, we're, we're open to additional days. Uh, we were trying to get into, you know, kind of a predictable rhythm. So it wasn't like all over the place, mm -hmm. but really yeah. I just, just need responses for everyone as far as you're, you are yes, likely to be able to attend or no, it's blocked. And then yeah. we'll adjust from there. For sure, thank you. Okay. Yeah. And I can like move stuff around if like need be, but I was just like wondering, I don't know. Sure. So, yeah, thank you so much for all the work you've done with scheduling. Yeah. Oh, thank, um, thank Matt, because I, I've only dipped my toe in it. He's usually in the thick of that, so. Yeah, our, great. But Leah, you, to write, you can't, you write your college applications. That's your priority. Yeah, that is your priority. <laughs> I'll, I'll do yeah. the Jewish grandmother thing, so yeah. Okay. So Matt had motion to adjourn. Um, I guess I will second the motion. And I don't, I don't think we have to take a roll call for that. If that does it. Thank you, everyone. Feel free to everyone. email me, Matt, individually if any, you have any questions or anything. Thank you so much, everyone. Bye. Have a wonderful Bye. evening. Bye. I'm stopping the recording. Okay.